Good evening culture lovers and welcome to the first of a brand new series of Bushel on the Box here on Ustream. As some of you may know I stopped writing my newspaper column after nearly 37 years just last week. It was gone. Finito. I blew it out like an Alaska airplane window. I was semi-retiring, apart from football and Seinfeld repeats and the odd episode of Columbo, I was going to stop watching telly and use all of that free time to go to gigs and finish writing my latest Harry Tyner novel. And then the phone rang. It was Vicky Nash from Ustream, who is like a panzer tank in tights, and who told me sternly, Gary Bushell, you can't stop. Jim needs you on the front line of the culture war. Well, you can't argue with Nashy, so here I am. Well, no, I don't think we're on the front line. I think we're more like Rook's Drift or the Alamo, trying to hold back the line, hold the line against the vast forces of corporate groupthink, battle-headed bureaucracy, and weaponized self-loathing all around us. Or David versus Goliath. The enemy have too much power and not nearly enough love for the taste of their viewers. But great TV and popular comedy are causes worth fighting for. So I'm back and I'm angry and I won't be pulling a single punch. Once more unto the breach, dear friends, once more. We live in strange TV times. We've got singers who can't sing without auto-tuning. We've got actors who can't act. And we've got comedians who aren't remotely funny, and we will get back to that soon enough. Our TV schedules are stuffed full of quizzes that are largely so-so, copycat cooking shows, fake reality formats, and soap operas are so overabundant. They're melodramatic and misery addicted, and they're about as true to life as Stranger Things, which is far more entertaining. But every now and then, a show comes along that reminds us just how much television can still matter. Mr. Bates versus the Post Office was the first great drama of 2024. The ITV four-parter written by Gwyneth Hughes blew the lid off the long-running Post Office scandal. In a true story worthy of Franz Kafka, 736 British postmasters were prosecuted for crimes they did not commit because of defective Horizon accounting software. Lives were ruined and in some cases shortened as senior post office staff covered up for their bug-ridden system, sending investigators likened to the Gestapo to persecute these good, hard-working people. Millions of viewers were rightly outraged and the government was galvanised into action. Well, you might ask why it took a TV series to make politicians tackle this shocking miscarriage of justice. It's a good question. I'm no fan of Ian Hislop, a rather pompous and self-amusing chap, but in fairness, his fortnightly private eye had been reporting on the scandal for years. But I think it shows the power TV still has, power to expose misjustice to millions, power to get us all talking, and indeed, to speak truth to real power. I don't think there has been a television drama this effective in making an impact since Jeremy Sanford's Kathy Come Home in 1966. Maybe it's time to revive the Wednesday play. And I think another reason it resonated with so many of us is that we all, to some degree, feel that we're at the mercy of faceless bureaucrats and, and government departments, large corporations who control our lives, banks who decide to close down their branches or axe our accounts, and businesses you can't get through to. They've got a phone line that says, your call is important to us. If it was that important, you'd have someone human manning the phones. I tell you what winds me up. Mumbling actors, lazy swearing, bad lighting on dramas, the overwhelming din of pumped up background music, constant recaps of things we've only just bloody seen, rolling news with nothing to say, and don't get me started on that grandstanding buffoon, Sadiq Khan, a bloke who is more up himself than a well-greased contortionist. Did you see the fireworks at Old Year's Night? For the first time ever, it kicked off with The Mayor of London Presents, bigging himself up at our expense. Pillock. It cost more than four million quid. That's the Euler's money gone. It was badly organised for the frustrated ticket buying crowd and oddly for this virtue signalling Burke, we've yet to see the figures for the night's carbon footprint. What the Mayor of London really stands for is a sustained war on small businesses and working class tradesmen in the outer suburbs. That and the horrendous wise in knife crime that has happened on his watch. The Mayor of London presents 
bankrupted plumbers and blood on the street. I've been running Gary's Goofs in various newspapers for over 35 years. These are unintentional innuendos uttered by people on television. People ask me what the best one of all time was. I'll come back to that. But the funniest one in recent memory was dear old Prue Leaf on the Great British Bake Off, who was talking about a piping bag when she said, Quite often I need two holes so that I can squirt. When you meet that little bit of resistance, that means it's full. I think there's a moral in that for all of us. In future episodes, we'll have more of the all-time great goofs, the best lookalikes, and even guests, because even I get fed up just listening to me. I was going to give up drinking this month, but I looked out the window and thought, well, if nature ain't doing dry January, why should I? With rain pouring down, rivers bursting their banks, and half the country twin for Atlantis, ITV couldn't have picked a better time to screen after the flood. They could have picked a better script, though. It started well, but would a rookie detective on the first day of her training course secretly download evidence and break the law? That was hard to swallow, as were her fella and his OTT family. In two words, a washout. Are you watching The Traitors? I can't be asked with the challenges, but I loved the bit where they all sit around that round table and absolutely convince themselves that they know who the, who's a traitor and who isn't, with absolutely no evidence whatsoever. And we let people like this sit on juries. I've seen four people go so far this series and only one of them was a traitor, and she only got caught out because two other traitors turned on her. A woman in the butchers just asked me whether they might do a political version of the traitors. There already is one. It's called Today in Parliament. All that backstabbing and bluffing, it's second nature for our clapped out political parties, feathering their nests as the country goes down the gurgler. I have been watching TV as a job for over half my adult life. Money for old rope, you think? Well, maybe, if you only watch the good stuff. But for every minder, there was a mini pops, and for every cheers, a Kate O'Mara's triangle. Not as promising as it sounded. 80s television was another world. Who could forget Del Boy Trotter, J.R. Ewing and Daisy Duke's shorts? British TV punched above our weight. The Yanks had the A-team, we had our feeders aim pet. They had Dynasty, we had Arthur Daly. Even EastEnders felt authentic back then. And no US late night host ever got close to Spitting Image's savage wit. 80s satire had proper teeth. Where are the laughs now? On Ustream, of course. Keep watching. Next episode, I'm talking TV comedy with my guest, Victoria Nash. Cheers. Cheers.